freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. Imagine spending your entire life as a slave, dreaming about freedom, but it's always out of reach. Then one day, it's yours. The end of slavery was, without a doubt, the pivotal moment in African American history. Emancipation marked the birth of our people. Remember, when you're a slave, you are a piece of property and someone owns you completely. And all of a sudden, you're free. Can you imagine what that's like? No, I can't imagine what that's like at all. I'm very fortunate. One day, somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, Negro, you're free. What do you think that felt like? I think for some, depending on the spirit of the person, would have been afraid. I don't know where else to go. I, I, I can't imagine another life other than being here, especially if he's treated nicely. Now, if he's treated poorly, I would say that immediately he says, I'm out of here. I hate this uh, plantation owner. I don't care if I starve. I want my freedom. You're free, but what are you going to do? Where are you going? And this is just a bunch that walked off and turned around and walked right back because, you know, the very first thing you realize by the time you get to the edge of the plantation is where the heck are we going? With no money. No money. So the idea of freedom was, I think, much more endurable than the reality of freedom. That's a good way to put it. Whatever challenges freedom might entail, our ancestors didn't just sit idly by, waiting to be delivered from bondage. This monument commemorates the service of over 200,000 African Americans who risked their lives for our people's freedom. There are hundreds of memorials to the Civil War, but almost none honored the service of the black soldiers until this monument opened in Washington, D.C. just a few years ago. One of those soldiers is a relative of mine. I'm hoping that the curator, Harry Jones, can help me find his name. You know, this is the first time I've been here. It gives me goose flesh. Give me a name, and I'll find him for you. OK, great. J.R. Clifford, who was my great uncle. J.R. Clifford. Can you help me find him in these 209,000 names? And here he is. Oh, there he is, yeah. John Clifford. That's the man. Always a pleasure to show a descendant one of his ancestors on this wall. <laughs> Thanks. It's really moving. Cold chills. J.R. Clifford was born a free man, but nearly half of the black soldiers were former slaves. Thousands of these men ran away from their masters in order to serve. Enlisting in the United States Colored Troops was their very first act as free men. These soldiers are our forgotten heroes. Did you ever hear any stories from your mother's side of the family about Julius Tingman? Uh, never. <laughs> All right, this is the first time I'm ever hearing of a Julius Caesar Tingman. Wow. Well, take a look at this. Volunteer enlistment, state of South Carolina. So he was in the service. Your great-great-grandfather, Julius Caesar Tingman served in the U.S. Colored Troops during the Civil War. 
He enrolled on March 7th. I'm going to cry. I can't believe it. After 21 years living as a slave, he risked his life by joining the Union soldiers. Wow. I never knew he knew this. Wow. This is great. You got me. And there's more? <laughs> Not the end. <laughs> when the, Ooh. you know, Frederick Douglass had to go to see Lincoln over and over again because they didn't want black people to have guns. So they had to be losing the war before they let black people be mad. Just, <laughs> Some things never change. Some things never change. <laughs> and Julius Caesar Tingman was promoted from private to corporal. I mean, he had to be a serious soldier in just a few months after he enlisted. Or a lot of brothers got killed. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't like they put the black troops in the back. <laughs> but I just got here yesterday. Don't worry about it. How does it feel to know that you have an ancestor, a direct ancestor who served in the Civil War? It is, um, I don't know, this whole thing is mind-blowing. I mean, I, I knew nothing of this. Nothing. Nothing. And we'll find him here on the wall. Chris Rock was not the only person we interviewed with an ancestor who served in the United States Colored Troops. 25th Regiment, and United States Colored Troops. In Infantry. alphabetical order in the regiment. And so here we There are. he is. Myers Kennelly. Don. You are descended from a Civil War veteran. Wow. Do I get anything for that? <laughs> <laughs> you want the pension? Yes. Well, your great-great-grandfather, Myers Cannoli, enlisted in the United States Colored Troops before the end of the Civil War. Wow. Can you imagine what it was like to be a slave all those years and then be in a uniform with a gun? fighting for the freedom of, of all the slaves. And still being called a nigger. And still being called a nigger. Yeah, unbelievable, amazing. To want to want to go do that, I mean, to really believe in it. Yeah. You know, to really believe in, in the dream. The end of the Civil War transformed this country from a slave society into something as yet unknown. Black people were thrust into a new world, one seemingly limitless in possibility. Freedom would change every aspect of their lives. They talked about the day of Jubilee. They spoke in terms of an apocalyptic moment. This was this great new opportunity for slaves to free themselves from ancient bondage. So they had to do something good with their lives. They believed this. My great-grandmother, Maud Scott Gates, is buried in this cemetery. She was born in 1857, and she was born a slave. Maud had a calling. She would make sure, somehow, that her family survived and thrived in the years following slavery. She was the dominant force who set our family on the road to education and the ownership of property. I admire her so much that I named my first child Maud. But I want to know much more about her, especially her experience as a former slave. 